crap, I'm having a lot of fun with this and kind of eager to just figure it out. What do you guys think? I think that's it. I think it's like, it's a puzzle right now. We need to solve. How are you supposed to play this? What is the correct move? Because right now there's a lot of unknowns. Like, you know, we're trying to pick up some of the mechanics of it. But that doesn't tell us, hey, how much should we wait expansion versus build up versus military overall at, at the start? I don't know. We have no idea what the correct balance will be. Um, so we streamed this on Saturday. We did four hours straight with no break whatsoever. Um, and sort of learned things. Great time with Hatshepsut. We actually played it until Hatshepsut died of old age. It was very old age. I actually don't know how old she was, but, uh, she had gone there. And I'd said on the next stream, we're going to start a new game because we have learned some new things. Let's apply it to the new one. Now, what we did find out in that game is when we did finally go to war, um, we were a little surprised by how much we were facing. Now, part of it has to do with the fact that enemy nation units don't all have the same color because they're color-coded by their families, which caught me a little off guard, but at least we know how to look for that now. But they did have more stuff than they did. And in some other test games I've been doing since then, just sort of practicing and fiddling, um, I'm getting the sense that um, I need to adjust upwards how many military units we should sort of have as kind of a benchmark, right? Kind of a thumbnail for whatever empire size would be. Um, and that's always one of the big things with these 4X games is trying to judge that. Because what you want to do is you want to build as few military units as possible, right? Because every military unit you build is another sort of production or science or culture building or something that you didn't build. You know, that that, that sort of thing, right? Because it's you're, you're spending resources in one place rather than another. Um, so you want to build the minimum possible. The question is, what is that minimum? And it varies highly from game to game to game. Um... We can get away with pretty few in Civ 6, but I think we, we do definitely need a few more in here. Um, ships would be cool this time. I do agree, Kakes. Maybe we'll oh, maybe we'll prioritize um, some sort of uh, like a coastal place. We still have to find out if you can build ships if you're say like um, if your city's not right on the coast. Right? If your city's not right on the coast, but water tiles are part of your city's sort of oops border area can you build boats we'll have to we'll have to find out for that because i don't actually know for sure kane thank you very much for that kane 42 the answer to life the universe and everything you ever needed for whiskey and chocolate fun thank you very much quill i blame you for my current addiction to motorsport manager i don't even like car thank you for all you do kane thank you very much and it's funny you know playing motorsport manager again recently um i've actually started to watch some racing uh, the official F1 channel has been posting a bunch of, like, old races on their channel over the past few weeks, you know, since there's no real racing going on, they're like, let's show you some old ones, and so I finally started watching it for the first time, and I'm like, this is, this is, this is much more compelling than I thought, and also, hey, Motorsport Manager is missing a lot of things. So we'll see. Uh, thanks everyone who's given out some gift subs. We got Pepito Jones, who just came in now with five gift subs, and just before that, it was a Zezblit. Zezblit, which is a very fun and entertaining name. Uh, thank you very much for that. Today's stream is going to be two hours. Uh, we're going to start pretty quickly here so that uh, we've got maximum gameplay. But good news, right after me, A Kiss for Luck is also going to be streaming Old World. It's going to be first time playing. She got the code, um, I think, late last night. So she's been practicing a little today so that she knows the UI. Very eager. I'm definitely going to be in the, uh, the stream for that, her chat, uh, because I'm very eager to see how another player, a new player, responds to this game as well. Because we're going to have sort of different thoughts about things with the user interface and whatever and i think i'm going to learn a lot from that so we're gonna get started it's gonna be a brand new game and as some of you may have guessed from from the title of the stream i guess the title's underneath the stream isn't it um i'm gonna play as rome so a couple of reasons one um as i mentioned on when we played on saturday whenever i play a new civ like game i'm always like i have to play egypt or rome i mean is there anything more more classically civ than those two Maybe Greece, but in my mind, Greece is like a third. It's like Egypt and Rome tied for first, and then third place, however, or, or second place, depending on how you want to count that, is, is Greece. Um, but the other thing I thought is, hey, I'm going to play all the nations from, say, left to right, just to play them all. Um, and I, I mentioned it in the Discord, but it sounded like a lot of other people were about to do Assyria today, uh, unless I misunderstood what we were saying. So I'm like, you know what? I'll go right to left instead. So we'll do Rome, and then maybe next time we'll do Persia, then Greece, and so on like that. So it all kind of lines up nicely in that, like, Rome is kind of the other one. Yeah, the art in this game is insanely good. 
every time like a new character pops up in the game, I'm like, all right, and stealing it for a D&D character. All the event art is just gorgeous. Anyway, so we got Rome over here. We're going to start with three technologies. So I think everyone starts with three technologies. Yeah. They're a little bit different, though. So as Rome, we're going to start with ironworking, which means we can be, build warriors right from the start. We're going to start with divination, so we can build a shrine right from the start. We're going to start with aristocracy, which does give us access to ambassadors, uh, which is going to be good because I think last time we actually ended up, we would have liked to negotiate for peace, but we didn't have an, um, an ambassador to, uh, to negotiate with. Our unique units are the Hastatus? Hastatus? I don't know if it's a ha or a hey. I don't know. Um... The, the the hat the hatters the mad hatters right over here um but it looks like the, a lot of the unique cultures are sort of gated behind um having one of your cities reach fairly high culture so it's not just tech um which is kind of nifty so these guys if we get the strong culture and have a stronghold we can build the mad hatters over here and then we have the legionaries uh the the hatters do upgrade to legionaries so it's sort of the next tier up which is kind of nice and we got four families someone um if you check the uh, the subreddit for this, which is reddit.com slash r slash old world game, someone made a spreadsheet of all of the civs, um, and particular, rather, all of the families. Um, there's something like 10 or 12 different types of families, um, and each nation has four of them. They're sort of so the combination of some of your starting tech, some of this, as well as your four starting families, is going to have a pretty big influence on certain things that are going on here. Um, in addition to that, being Rome, we have one specific thing. So it's not met in the traits here. But as Rome, looks like we're going to get double XP for our military units, which is pretty great. Plus one fatigue unit. So what's interesting about this is if you see an option to train a monkey to become an assassin, go for it. But be sure to have one extra banana. <laughs> ah, hey, Rabbit Wolf, thank you very much. Hold on, I'll read that in a second while, after I finish this thought here. So we get double XP for our units. We also, our units have plus one fatigue li unit limit. So each unit can move one extra time every round, except that eventually we'll run into order limits. I feel like as Rome, one of the things we're going to want to prioritize is anything that gets us additional orders, because we can make use of them very extensively. I mean, we don't have to take advantage of the plus one fatigue limit per... per Per unit but if we have lots and lots and lots of orders roman units are going to be super mobile which is really good also we got a lot more military training stuff uh per year so we're going to be able to do a lot more unit promotions and things so i think that's going to be a plan i'm going to go ahead and just hit start uh, i'm going to plan strong difficulty um so you know still sort of middle of the pack i guess strong and noble are both middle of the pack right because there's yeah there's eight difficulties so difficulty four or five, somewhere in the middle. We'll go with the strong because we're still learning, but it's still a step up. Medium map was huge when we played it. I think we're going to have no complaints about that. Um, also, if I'm looking at here, a lot of these maps are sort of maybe meant to be balanced for multiplayer and different things. I think we'll just stick to Seaside for now because I think it'll be the sort of more organic kind of experience. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get that going. And while that is loading, let me check the contributions to the... I don't know about enough about Roman culture to like how we would reflavor our whiskey and chocolate fund. It'd be the the wine and olive fund. Someone in chat come up with a come up with something we can we can refer to today because I don't know. Uh, but Rabbit Wolf, thank you very much for the support. Uh, thanks for keeping me sane throughout my entire undergrad uh, and now into my PhD years. Aerospace engineer, if anyone's curious, that's freaking awesome. Guy's gonna be really good at K Kerbal Space Program uh, when Kerbal Space Program Two comes out later this year. Uh, this game is, has me pogged out of my mind. Keep it coming. Rabbit, I'm happy you like it. And Cooler Man Chaos as well. Uh, last song was a good song for my reconquest of Rift Africa and Hoi 2. Man, Cool Man, you like to play the old Paradox games, eh? Hoi 2, that's crazy. As Brazil. Hard to do it without tanks and trucks. Uh, and Ro coming in just now as well. Happy birthday, Quill. Thank you very much, Ro. Yes, it's part of my extended birthday week, I suppose. Uh, I want to commemorate your completing a lap around the sun. Just a little bit too late to actually be helpful with. Thank you very much. Uh... You know, my plan is to live forever, and so far, it's working out. Bread and games? Yeah. They, it's a bread and circuses fund, right? That, that sort of makes sense. Okay, so we're going to start here. Um, I still don't really know enough about some of what we may be focusing on to make a decision as to, would we like to move our starting settler? I don't see any reason to, um, especially with the fact that we know we can expand borders, with, you know, various things, like whenever we plop down a specialist in a tile and things like that. So I think we're going to be okay to settle in place. 
Oh, there's the pop-up from Ro. There you go. I already read the message, but thank you very much, Ro. Um, so, our four families that we have here is Rome. We have the, the Fabius, the Fabios. Oh, they're so pretty with their long hair. So, the Fabios here, um, their cities produce extra military training so that we can do more unit promotion. Their cities will have 50% more defense. All new units start with Steadfast. I believe... Yeah, this is the 25% bonus versus Barbarians. Could be very handy early on. Um, and then their family seat, so the, the family's capital, gets 25% bonus to these as well. And right away we get 400 training points, so we could give some upgrades pretty aggressively right away. Alternatively, starting with uh, the, the Claudius here, the Claudes right over here, uh, the landowners. So they would give, all their cities get bonus to growth, and then they get the growth in the food. Um, rural specialists train fast, which is kind of nice. They can buy tiles. I don't know if that matters. We start with plus two citizens, which means we can, as soon as we improve any tiles, we can specialize them right away. I do like the early growth. I don't know if I'm going to want that for my capital, though. Two volcanoes. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, Vesuvius and Mount Etna, totally okay. What could possibly go wrong? Um, what is going to be nice about the volcanoes, though, is that your farms do get a boost to their food production being adjacent to volcanoes. Makes sense. Volcanic ash is supposed to be really good uh, fertilizer for the uh, the farms. So we've got that. I don't know if this game has disasters. It certainly has events. So I'm assuming that there are going to be events related to volcanic stuff. Uh, but fingers crossed it's not too bad. Even harder without any manpower. You have some nukes. You're playing as Brazil and you've got some nukes. Damn, man. Uh, next, we've got the uh, Valerius family, um, and they produce extra civic points, so we can pass laws a little easier. They also generate bonus culture per specialist, which is nice for unlocking various things. Um, they do provide us 10 orders whenever we get a culture event, which could be very useful for us. Now, of course, I mean, eventually we'll silence this. So, I mean, is it important to be our, our capital or not? It does start with plus one culture level right away, which is kind of nice. And then finally... I mean, we got Julius, the Julius family. Julius family gives you plus one order per year, flat, for each one of their cities. Um, they also give us more civic points for uh, family opinion level. Um, we start with treasury right away and uh, the ability to unlock decrees. And right away we get 400 civic points, which means we are going to be able to pass some laws pretty aggressively. I think just thematically, I like the idea of having the Julius family be our capital here. So I think that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Ooh, minus one dagger defense. <laughs> nice read. Very nice. So we got Roma here. Uh, it is a capital, which is spiffy, and it's the Julius family over here. Um, and so, yeah, orders per turn. Um, it doesn't actually specify. It says 11.1 from Roma. It doesn't specify that we're getting... Uh, it's, yeah, I guess we are getting some from City itself. Um, it's whiskey and chocolate. Is there a breakdown? Hey, Furious George! I still love your name, man. May the fourth be with you. May the fourth be with you as well, Furious George. Thank you. Is there anywhere on here that gives you a breakdown of how many orders the city is generating and why it's generating those orders? I don't think so. So we know that 11.1 of our orders comes from Roma. And I think you get more orders depending on its population. Maybe... I don't know. Uh, okay, so we're getting extra plus one order per citizen. So it's probably 10 as a base, plus one because of the family, and the other point one from here. But I don't know if there's a breakdown. Top of the screen, plus two. That's food. So, I mean, it's this city is generating 31.8 gold per year, two food, 12 science, 12 uh, civics, and 10 training. But I don't know if we actually get a breakdown of the orders. And I don't think it's going to be too important usually. But here I feel like we're really going to want to try to make sure we can milk anything we can get. And that includes building. I think camps give like a half a um, an order each. So we might prioritize that. Romulan Empire for the win. Yes, we're the Romulans. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I think I am fine with starting a settler first, which is the auto queued thing in your first city. I think that sounds lovely. Let's take a look at a research situation. Okay. So... One thing I really have come to think as a very important thing um, is you really do want to prioritize the researches that unlock the base production units, i.e. Um, if you don't have mining, you want that because building mines for metals. Stone cutting for quarries, which we suffered with last time. It was funny, watching the VOD, the very first tech that came up, we had the option of taking stone cutting for the quarry. And then the other one is the lumber mill technology. 
Um, and it is important to double check if there might be some prereqs for those. I don't remember what they're all called. Um, I mean, stone cuttings right away, but the lumber mill. So we might want to check prereqs. But it is really nice to get your basic productions down. So I think we are going to grab stone cutting here. I think that's a very good pick. Most likely, if the get a free settler tech comes up, I think you got to take that because it seems really strong. But we will see. All right, we've got a scoot over here. By the way, if you weren't here for the previous stream, um, the movement system is kind of interesting. Uh, so the scout here has a movement rate of three. Obviously, the difficulty of the train might impact that. So one sort of action for the scout will be to move, spend three moves. Here, it's going to be double difficult train. So you can go this far in a move. But I can. it costs you an order to do that. I can keep spending orders on the same person. Each unit has a fatigue amount. When they run out, then they kind of refuse to do any more. Normally, units have three. Scouts have plus one. And because we're Rome, all of our units have an extra one. So I can move the scout five times each turn. Each time we'll use an order. And you can see why, like, if we will be able to just crunch through orders like nobody's business here. I have an angry heir. Oh, Prince Remus. Yep, okay, that makes a lot of sense. You're right. Because I am Romulus. We got Prince Remus over here, my brother. A little cranky pants. It's a sacred tomb! I mean, it sounds cool. I ain't gotta apologize for the fact that I did mute the music. Um, because it's licensed music and things like that, there could be issues on the yub tubs with the music. The music in this game is really wonderful, but we're gonna play it safe for YouTube. Uh, but the sounds are still kind of cool. Our expedition approaches an ancient monument. The structure appears to be the tomb of a great leader. An inscription reads, Passerby, whoever you may be, I was once king of kings. Grudge me not, therefore, this piece of earth that covers my body. So we can leave it undisturbed. We would become gracious, which gives us plus two charisma, which gives us um, more civics per round, which is really nice. It's going to improve it by, by an extra four civics per turn. That's a 33% increase over what we're currently doing, which is kind of nice. And whenever, um, I was going to say Julius Caesar, not Julius, we're Romulus. Whenever uh, Romney over here, whenever Romney over here becomes a general, I think the higher charisma... It gives you some, some combat trait. I don't know. It's not crit. It might be defense. I don't know. There will be no king but me. Destroy it. We give us plus two to legitimacy, which is here. Uh, every ten legitimacy does give us an extra order, which is kind of nice. Plus, I think improves our relationship with our various families. Uh, and then we can let we can study their preservation rituals for 50 science, which currently is about two turns worth of science. Doesn't seem that strong. I think I like this idea. By becoming gracious here... Uh, plus two charisma is nice, and also there's a bunch of events that give you different choices if you've got certain keywords. So I think gaining gracious might unlock things in the future. So I think I'm keen on this. Yeah, our leader traits over here. So uh, so Mr. Romney here is uh, he's currently he's a schemer archetype. Uh, he's gracious. He is ruthless. He currently is sitting at minus one courage. To level two charisma, minus one discipline. But he's got four wisdom. So our starting tech rate's actually pretty good. Uh, some people in Discord today were discussing that they thought Assyria might be fairly tricky because I think you start with negative two wisdom, so your initial tech rate can be a little poor. We've got a city state, a city site really close to our capital over here. That's nice and clear. That's going to be really nice to see. Let's keep scooting a boot. Oh, let's go and do another goodie hut. The King's Roads. All roads lead to Roma. Our expedition comes upon an, an impressive paved road system leading between wood structures that have long since rotted away. The consensus among our scientists is that the engineering required to build such a site was far ahead of its time. What would you have us do with it? We can break down the roads for stone, uh, which would give us experience, so our king would gain some experience, and would give us 75 stone that we could use for something. Or we could study the technology, get labor force, which unlocks roads as well as the choice between slavery and freedom as a government. I think I'm going to study the technology here because we are going to be able to pass one of these laws immediately. We have enough civic points. And here's the thing. Uh, that's not the button. Right over here. Um, we're Rome. Kind of feels like we need to go slavery. Thematically, it fits. And also, we can really make use of the extra orders. For a lot of other nations early on like this, plus five orders, to me, they probably wouldn't be able to use it. it would just sort of convert to extra money. Um... The, the uh, exploring along a river is kind of neat. That's, um, there's, you can get exploration law here to even boost that. But the rivers are good because they count as roads too. So I think we're going to go ahead and learn, or, and adopt slavery. Don't do this at home, kids. Very bad. 
But if we're Rome, it's going to be very good for us here. Because, yeah, the extra five orders per turn is actually going to be monstrously good. What resource is the Red Jewel Southwest? Oh, Southeast, right over here. It is jewels or gems, um, which are, if you build a mine on here, it will give us culture, uh, some money, and it's a luxury that we can give to a family as well so they become uh, friendlier. So we have a warrior and a worker ready to go. Um, we actually do have the ability to build these shrines. So I think, yeah, if I'm reading this correctly, we can only have one of each shrine per nation. Um, and I think there's four different shrines, so it seems kind of nice to build fairly early. The other thing we can consider is um, putting down the Oracle or the Hanging Gardens, both of which need 400 stone, and we don't have enough money to do it. We need 870 money to fill in the blanks, so we're not going to be able to start on one of these. We could consider not building anything that needs any stone, so no shrines and things, just focusing on... Um, on uh, farming, but at least we do have stone cutting coming. We'll be able to start building some quarries. Uh, I think I am just going to go and start putting down um, some of these shrines somewhere. Um, maybe uh, maybe inside of some of these urban areas. Why don't I just build it here? What's the difference? The stats are exactly the same. Um, how about Venus? What a surprise. A shrine to Venus will increase growth a little bit. Shrine of Vulcan makes sense. You're absolutely right. We could prioritize the Shrine of Vulcan. Gives our minds 50% more output. Um, put it on. I mean, if we put it here and then we get a specialist, it would give us this tile here. But I mean, probably at some point we're just going to build a pasture here and then we'll put a specialist here and it'll capture all those tiles anyway. So, all right. Yes, let's put a Shrine to Vulcan. Tell you what, right here, it's next to a volcano. Let's do it. Four themes, even though uh, it's not going to give us as much until we also get mines. Blue Thalias, thank you very much for the contribution to the uh, the Bread and Circuses Fund. Catching live stream while working from home. Testing how the tip in tipping thingy works. Well, it works real well for me. That Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are we doing a Star Trek themed run on May the 4th? Okay, that's really funny in that we're like crisscrossing like three different references to things. But yeah, I mean, you know, we've got Romulus and Remus which is um, the Vulcans and the Romulans. Uh, you know, we've got Vulcan over here. It kind of makes sense. Not that obvious. Hey, thank you very much for the contribution as well to the Bread and Circuses Fund. Been enjoying the YouTubes and all the current content. Here's a bit to show my ongoing appreciation for the quality content. I think your best general should be named, renamed to Albear. Keep up the woodwork. Uh, Albear, of course, is the nickname of one of our drivers in our Motorsport Manager run. So, here's the thing. I have one order left. I could move the Swordman. I could also just, like, not consume the order, and it would be sold um, for money. Um, I think, though, I think I will just go ahead and move him, and we'll see if we can get a little scoot oot with him over here. Uh, I could also just have him hang around by the city site to block anyone else from taking it. I don't know. But, um, yeah, no more orders left, so we'll go do that. Oh, promote the Swordman. You're right. I should, I should do that rather than use some orders. <gasps> We've met the Danes! Probably plenty of Danes in the chat right now. You people can't be trusted. Um, but again, are these like portraits not cool? Like all of them, the art on these guys is so awesome. And I love the like, the, the paint is really cool. So, uh, court is divided over a recent discovery. The Danes are scholars, wish to study the Danes' culture, deepen understanding. Uh, but our generals insist that these savages deserve no such respect. I think our generals might be Swedes. It would explain a lot. Um, so this is a tribe. It is not a, it's not a, a true empire. It's not another player. Um, but they are, they're in between sort of barbarians and real things. They're, they're multi-city states. Um, so we can observe their ways and tradition. We would become intelligent. King Romulus would become intelligent. If we put him in as a governor of a city, he would generate plus two science per culture level. There's a very good chance that our starting guy is actually going to be used as a general, though. Or we could devise ways to destroy them, which would make me into a tactician instead of a schemer. Um, it is kind of handy because of the plus one vision range, which is kind of nifty. Again, if we make him a general. Um, it would give him uh, plus two courage and plus two wisdom. Now, it's I don't know if that's what we replace from being a schemer. It looks like with being a schemer, we can be a general or a spy master. And schemer is minus two courage, minus four wisdom. So for a net of plus two, which to me says that switching to... Tactician would be better because it's total of four points instead of a, a, like a net of two. 
I don't know. We'll do this. Uh, hey, does this game have beta access? So this game goes into early access tomorrow. Tomorrow, I think it's 11 a.m., although I don't know the time zone. Um, it's probably on the page itself. It goes into early access tomorrow. You can pre-order it now. If you do exclamation mark what game in the chat, um, you 